Hello and welcome to this week's Coffee Kegs and Kriegspiel. Uh, I see so far there's quite a few that randomly... I know you get the notification on your phone when they... Uh, what, I don't even know what it's called. A, a cast or stage is, is opened up on Discord. I've, I've done it before where I've clicked on it and didn't mean to actually join. Um, Today's topic was one that was suggested a while back, uh, and we're just barely getting to it now. I'm trying to remember who suggested it. Uh, oh, G-Puzzle. Yep. So he, see, he had suggested um, the following topic. So how do you properly train new and sometimes old uh, Kriegspiel players? What are the things they should learn? What's the best way to learn? And, you know, what can umpires do? Then what can the IKS do to help that? Um, so I'm going to be talking about that. Um, you're welcome to sit around if you want to join the conversation. I'd much rather have someone to talk with. So raise your hand and I'll invite you to the stage and, and you can share your thoughts as we go. I did take some notes um, of some a couple things that I wanted to share. And then we'll, we'll see where the conversation goes and who joins. So first of all... Um, Training new players, what, what are the things that they need to be trained on? So I wrote down um, the, some of the classic things. One are dispatches, so how to format them correctly um, and you know what to put in them, how to communicate. Uh, two is, is orders, again, how to format those correctly, and then the substance of orders. What, what should you say, what shouldn't you say, how you should say it. Uh, what are what are appropriate orders for the game? All that s sort of stuff. Um, not missing orders, which is it? It's a skill or a habit, I guess. Of um, if you're in a game, a uh, play by post game specifically, not not missing the orders for that. Uh, communication, which falls under dispatch, but there's a little bit more in that. And then leadership in general um, are all things that. Creekshield players learn and should, you know, to be a good player, have a, a good understanding what to do. Um, so I'm going to talk about what that looks like and then how, as an umpire, I'll start by speaking from umpire experience, how does an umpire teach those skills and reinforce them? Um, so one thing that an umpire can do is give examples to their players. Um, if they want their player to write a format in a certain way, they should give an example of what that format should be. Um, you know, if you want a, a typically good dispatch has you know the from person to person, from location to location, and the the time of it being sent, and then and then the body of the message. Um, and so, give an example to players so that they know to do that. Um, and speaking from experience, if you get a dispatch that doesn't have that information, it's extremely frustrating to be like, well, who's this from? <laughs> when did they write it? How long did it take to get here? Um, you know, where are they now? These are This is all useful information that when you receive a dispatch, you it's very helpful to know. Um, so if you're an umpire, how, let's, talk, let's sp focus specifically on dispatches. How do you reinforce that? So one's giving an example. And I've seen um, that the best practice for that is when you create a server. Um, and, and I guess this is speaking more from a play-by-post perspective, though it can work for live as well. When you create a server, it's if, if you want your players to be at a certain level, you can help them as an umpire by giving them some training, literal training documents, um, and examples of what you want in terms of dispatches and orders. It's helpful to have whatever that channel is, you know, label it player training, player guide, whatever. Um, make sure it's its own channel and that the players can't talk into it. We've, I've seen a few, there's a few new up and coming umpires um, that have been doing games recently, um, to name a few, that are, that are very promising and, and doing a good job. So Swentz, Barclay, um, John, um, Chinleaf, they're they're doing great. Um, but I, I see them making the mistake, same mistakes that I did when I first started, which was you make a 
an instructional channel, but you don't close it off to the players, and so they start typing in there and commenting on your training or whatever. And then before you know it, you've got a big, long conversation that ran away. And it's annoying for me as a player, like, if I want to refer back to a map or a briefing or something, and there's already this big, long text in the channel because players have been talking, then you got to scroll up and find where it was. So to be clean and organized, make your channel and make it so only you can post there. That way, for players, it's easy to go back and refer to that. Um, and you can put examples of... Um, yeah, of dispatches. If we're talking about orders and types of orders you can give, um, you can put you know YouTube videos to help players understand the time period they're in and um, have a feel of what kind of orders are appropriate. Um, for me, I always I think the best example examples uh, of order writers are Damon and Arp, and there's a few others out there that are really good, but they format their orders in a way that's very easy to read um, for as an umpire. They're always just long enough to get whatever detail is needed, but they never write long sentences, you know, long paragraphs of if-then statements. Um, the ARP does a good job. Some umpires don't let you do this. I often do, and it helps me. ARP usually makes you know takes his last screenshot and kind of draw doodles on it what he wants his units to do and for me as an umpire that's always helpful um, to know exactly he gives the orders and then makes the drawing and it's in my mind it's him you know pointing with his uh, you know officers and aides standing around him what he wants them to do um, and so the drawing helps to know exactly what his orders are and what he's thinking um, so if you're an umpire and you want that, um, one is you can give examples of uh, how they format their orders. Um, you can also give training on what kind of orders are appropriate. So depending on the, the game and the scale you're at, some players may have a tendency to be very too much in the weeds and ordering each individual regiment when they should be giving orders to brigades. Um, Usually it's more often that case than being too high level and too vague, but sometimes players are very vague and don't give enough detail in their orders. You can have it both ways, but as an umpire you can kind of give give them examples of what, um, what they should be doing. Um, and then let's talk about punishment. So as an umpire, if you want a player to improve, you've got to use... Now, as the umpire, it's up to you to either reward or punish their reward good behavior and punish bad behavior. If you don't do those things, you really don't deserve to complain about players not doing things like you want. So, what do I mean by punishment? Um, there's different ways to do that. Um, you can kind of do it within the game itself as kind of a, a role play or with the outside the game. So, let's say... Uh, let's say the player's orders are bad. Um, within the game, you can make it obvious as the umpire that, you know, the either the their um, their pieces just you know the units they command didn't do what they wanted them to do. Um, sometimes if I get really really bad orders, and this doesn't happen all the time, but I'll have an officer come back and just say, "Look, I got your orders. I don't know what they mean." Can you tell me the again? Basically, the player loses a turn loses a turn of action um, because his orders were so bad that his NPC sub officers are just like, I don't know what to do with this, and so they come back and ask for clarification. Um, it's within the game. Uh, it's it's really the best way to do it because it's within the game. It's still role play. Um, it still keeps the player in the realism of it, uh, and it's realistic. Like if if you've got bad orders. You know, in a military, sometimes officers aren't going to feel comfortable to say, <laughs> repeat your orders or say them a different way. Um, maybe they'll just try their best or go off and do their own thing. Um, but you can punish players in that way and, and try to make it obvious that, not that you're punishing them, but because their orders were bad or because they did something, that this is the result. And so it's a, it's a way of... Um, helping them understand that they need to do something different next time to improve. Uh, you could also punish outside the game. So, and what I mean by that is like if the orders are just 
I've had instances where a player will write me a half a novel of orders and my mind just, my eyes glaze over and I'm like, I'm not even going to read that. And I will literally write to the player, sometimes before the turn and sometimes as I'm resolving the turn, I'm saying, this is too much. I'm not even going to read it all. You need to be a lot more succinct uh, in your orders because this, this is unrealistic. It's too much for an umpire. And so that's outside the game, I'd say, where I'm just telling them directly, like, you, this needs to change because it, it's not okay. Um, so General Melkit asks, is this being saved to you yet? Yeah, I'm recording it right now. I'll post it to YouTube later. Uh, if anyone has any comments or questions, raise your hand. I'd love to have thoughts. Um, but I'm, I'm just going to keep talking um, otherwise. So um, other things you can do to reward your players. So the greatest reward is just the game going well for the player. If they give good orders, write good dispatches, and you know, are, are good at communication, then the game should go well for them and, and things should be positive. But you can also reward them by you know recognizing them either during the game or after and just say, hey, this person did a really good job with X skill, uh, and, and that can be its own reward. Um, one of the things that an umpire can do, talking about players missing orders and play-by-posts, which is one of the hardest things that umpires deal with. Um, and, you know, we all we all have lives outside of Kriegspiel, even though Kriegspiel is life. But, um, so sometimes you forget. I, I have, and partially because it's because I'm in too many games, but I have forgotten to post orders sometimes. I really try hard not to, but sometimes I have. Um, and there's some players that are <laughs> worse at it than others uh, about forgetting to post orders. So as an umpire, what can you do to improve this behavior? Well, one thing that works really well that I do, and I've seen a lot of umpires do, is you know post your deadline, have a deadline channel so it's easy to see when the deadline is. You know, use hammer time so that it automatically adjusts for people time zone, and then add, even add the thing that has the countdown for how much times to it. And then the day of, post three or four reminders to say, hey, you know, I'm resolving at this time. Um, don't forget to get your orders in. And that's extremely helpful because people forget. It's natural. You get distracted by other games or, or life. Um, and so if you want your players to remember to post orders or have the best chance of it, um, give them lots of reminders. And then be consistent. Um, if you're, you know, if you... If you resolve a turn after two days for one turn, and then you wait a week, and then you wait two weeks, and then three days, and then one day, and then four weeks, if you're not consistent, you're going to lose players. You'll lose your momentum, and you can't ask your players to be consistent in giving orders if you're not consistent in resolving. So you as an umpire have to do your best in that regard. Um, and then on the punishment side, you know, what do you do if, if a player misses an order once or twice? My general philosophy is after one miss, I give a warning, and after two, I replace them. That's a little bit harsh, and I don't do that all the time. It depends on the circumstances. You know, if the player is really apologetic and they're like, oh, I'm so sorry this came up, you know, I, I'm understanding. But if the player just doesn't post orders, never says anything, and then just doesn't post them again twice in a row, I'm just going to replace them. I'm not going to waste my time letting them play and you know, they're, have them waste my, waste my time. Um, so you do have to, to punish that. You can't, if you allow the behavior to keep going on without consequence, you're going to continue to have that behavior and the player won't learn. So you have to be willing to sometimes replace players um, as a punishment for not posting orders. And if the players know up front that that's, your, that's how you operate, they're more likely to post orders because they know you're serious. And um, So I usually... Um, if it's an issue, I'll usually post a, a reminder to everyone, hey, if you miss your orders, you get one warning and then you're kicked the second time. And that's a reminder that, hey, if you want to play this game, you got to stay with it. Now, this is all for play-by-post because when it's live, usually that's not an issue. Um, the other other skills that Creekshill players should know and how to teach them, one's communication, and, and I don't mean just dispatches by that. Um, uh, that's part of it, but 
remembering to communicate with other players frequently um, is important to do well and a skill to have. Some people are better than others. Some people over communicate, um, which that's better to over communicate than under communicate. Um, so some people are writing a ton of dispatches every turn, really more than what's physically realistic. Um, and that's on the umpire to punish that behavior as well. Um, I've seen it done in different ways, but probably the best way is to say, okay, you want to write uh, this dispatch and have it copied six times and sent out to all your subcommanders. Um, well, we're, you know, this is the Civil War, and right now you're sitting on a horse with your staff sitting behind you, so uh, it's going to take you about 20 minutes to dictate your, your order you just wrote, and all your staff's going to be sitting there writing it and then sending out copies and so you put some realism and, and phys uh, physical limitations to it and so you, they write this super dispatch and, and want it copied six times and sent six ways you say well okay then you're just going to sit there for a turn or two um, while this happens and that's the um, consequence of writing so many dispatches and, and being a little bit unrealistic in that way um, so you got to think about how you do that as an umpire um, what if they don't communicate enough? That's a tough one. Um, really, the ultimate punishment for that is that their team doesn't do as well. Um, and that's, you can't really, you can send reminders, I guess give the player reminders within the game, say, hey, you probably should be letting your, you know, CIC know what's going on. It's been an hour or two since you've written to him and he's completely in the dark. You can give little reminders like that. Um, and then I guess at the end of the game, when it's over, just give feedback and just like, and, you know, let them know, say, hey, you know, you did okay in this thing, but you really didn't communicate well enough with your other players and your team suffered for it. So give just give that feedback and let them improve for the next game. Um, leadership, it follows along that vein. Um, it's a bit difficult. Um, everyone playing Kriegspiel is a true exercise in leadership. Um, and even though it's a game, it's the same skills that you would use in real life, um, whether it's you know corporate, you know, corporate job or any kind of job really, um, or anytime you're on any kind of team, the leadership skills that you have in Kriegspiel apply. Uh, and so teaching that is difficult, uh, and a lot of it just comes from experience. As an umpire, you can reinforce that with feedback. Um, during and after the game. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think of how else you could really help that along. Um, all right, I'm going to pause here again. we got four people watching. Thank you for watching and listening. Do you, raise your hand if you have any comments or questions. I'd love to hear from you, and I'll invite you to the stage. I think there should be a button somewhere on your screen to raise your hand if you're interested. Otherwise, I'll just keep talking. Uh, by the way, I didn't. I should have explained this at the beginning. This is my live game from this last Thursday we did on the island, the fictional island of Sodor, a logistical game with a quirky theme of you know Thomas the train, the tank engine, and and uh, his train buddies trying to stop an invasion from the Isle of Men. Uh, I'm just showing. It's, it's actually a pretty good map. You could, without the even the Thomas the train theme, you could. Let's see what's the scale. So that's 15 kilometers. So this, from one end to the other, did I change? Oh, that scale got messed up. Uh, let's see, that looks like 30. About, yeah. So if I have that, that's about 100 kilometers across the island. So you can have a pretty big fight. Um, anyway, I digress. That's why I'm just giving something to look at. It's kind of a cool map. Um, so what else to do to to train? Um, or let's answer the other question. So the first one was, um, how do you properly train new and old players? What did, should we learn? So we covered that. What's the best way to learn? I think we covered that. Uh, what can umpires do? And then finally, what can the IKS do? Um, I'd love to hear from you guys what you think the IKS can do. Um, and, and it's something we talk about a lot as an admin group. Uh, I think... For us, it's training umpires. Um, you have a good umpire, then they'll 
train the players. Eventually everyone will improve in their skill level as they get along and get more experience. Um, so anything that ICAS can do in terms of training umpires is, is helpful. I think um, training players having the but we don't call it a buddy system but basically two ICs which is a, a really great way um, to do games because um, it lets more people play but you can also pair maybe someone who's new or needs to improve with someone who's more skilled and experienced and so the, the, the second in command can see how the primary player does everything and they'll they'll learn by that example and can mimic it and in a similar vein you can do that with umpires um, if you get co-umpires to help run a game whether it's live or play by post they'll whoever the lead umpire is or lead umpires they'll see how they do things and can mirror that in their own games and um, it's a great way to learn how to do it and and how to teach um, that's probably the best way um, that, that was actually mostly what I wanted to say and I'm not just gonna ramble on for the sake of it so if nobody has anything to add I don't see any hands raised I'm gonna end it here thank you for attending hope you enjoyed it if there are other topics that you'd like to hear me ramble on or hear someone else ramble on um, within the IKS please post it in the the topics ideas and questions um, channel and uh, thank you for for listening and we'll see you again later bye oh I see a question uh, two typing I'll hold on I'm gonna see what you guys say before I close out Anders in Quebec are typing let's see who can type the fastest or who has the shortest message how can you play Kriegspiel for free oh, okay good question um, so I see there's tabletop but you're broke yeah so you can play pretty much any game that we have you don't have to have tabletop to play um, one of our so desert fox he has tabletop now but he went probably almost two years and he's played the most games out of anyone within the IKS and he didn't have tabletop uh, and even ran games without tabletop he just used PowerPoint and a few other things um, so you can absolutely play for free um, buying tabletop is not a requirement um, it's helpful it's certainly helpful for when you want to umpire um, it's the best way to have a map and manipulate things um, but you it's not a requirement even for umpiring because plenty of people have done games without it so to answer that uh, just join a game in the IKS we have the recruitment channel just look for play by post or live games there or live games listed in our events and um, most are free I do I'm probably the only one at the moment. I do charge for some of my games to help pay for my time, so not all my games are free, um, but most, actually about half are now, um, but most every, all the other games that are posted are free. Um, so look in recruitment and, and you'll find them. Anders was asking, so I have zero experience with Kriegspiel and joined the server literally today. Oh, welcome. Thanks for your insight. I do have years of experience training enlisted airmen and NCOs, and it seems leadership skills from real life would trans... Yeah, absolutely. Um, it is different. The hardest part about Kriegspiel leadership is, one, we're all remote. It's all over the internet. So there's no... It's not face-to-face, -face, um, which can make it challenging. And the other part is, you are leading a very <laughs> diverse crew of people with very different experiences. So... You know, one might be a 13-year-old kid in high school, um, you know, from the Eastern Europe. Uh, another might be a 60-year-old guy who's retired. Um, and so you can have everyone from all walks of life um, with very different experience. But th the thing that unites us is our love of Kriegspiel. So it can be hard to lead a team that is so different. Um, but it, it is fun in that challenge um, and yeah you're right the uh, the leadership skills do translate because um, ultimately as a leader uh, as a leader within the a Kriegspiel game like if you're leading a team on one side it's all about developing a, a strategy and vision for what you want your team to do um, and then communicating that effectively to them so that they understand it and then and that's kind of pre-game and then as you get into the game it's 
making the right decisions at the right time um, as you take you know you make a plan based on the information you have and then of course as soon as you make contact with the enemy that plan yeah everything you thought you knew isn't, isn't exactly true and so you've got to be adaptive and so as a leader you're taking in lots of new information some correct some wrong and you've got to be able to decide what information is important and what decisions do I need to make mid-game um, and, and then again communicating that effectively to your team which that skill translates into any military or corporate or, or whatever um, so it's, it's kind of fun to, to see and do. Thank you for those comments and questions. Uh, if there's none other, I'm going to sign off and uh, we'll see you again later. Thanks, everyone.